So today we're going to talk about periods and I feel like I have to just start this off with a disclaimer because I mean, I don't know, well I get asked a lot about what happens when you're on your period, you know, when you're traveling or because you live in a vehicle, like what do you do, how do you handle it, and like I, I don't feel like any shame about talking about periods. I don't think it's weird to talk about it. I don't think it's like disgusting because it's just your period. I mean, it's your freaking menstrual cycle, dude. And it's a very real thing that you have to take into consideration and you have to learn how to adapt and maneuver around when you live this sort of a lifestyle or when you travel in general or, you know, just when you live your normal life like you have a routine and a way to handle it when you live in a house or an apartment and it's kind of the same thing so that being said if you do have any qualms about hearing about periods or discussing them or i don't know whatever then maybe maybe don't don't watch this one up to you whether you want to stay for the conversation or you don't but in all fairness i wasn't joking the title is for real we're talking about periods buying a new one Okay, so first I want to address just periods in general and this applies to like if you're traveling, like just traveling, nothing to do with living in a car or if you're living in a car and you're not even traveling, like it just periods in general, right? So like the number one thing that I would say is plan to plan around it, meaning that like for most people it comes once a month. So just know when exactly that month is going to happen. So if you don't know, like there was, a, you know, a point in my life where I was just kind of like, oh, okay, it's here. like this is that week and I, I had like a general idea but I didn't know like I couldn't look at a calendar and be like no that's gonna those are gonna be the days you know what I'm saying so I think being able to kind of track it and pinpoint the exact time that it's going to take place is very beneficial because then that leads me to my second suggestion which would be plan around it so now that you know when it's going to be happening you can easily kind of change things around in your life and schedule things around it. So for example, say that you really want to do a 10 mile hike for the month of January, right? But you're going to be on your period January 22nd and like for the next like four or five days, whatever. So maybe don't plan your 10 mile hike January 22nd to like the next four or five days after that. Like you know and then I mean you know like if you can't help it like you live in a vehicle and you're just constantly out and about and whatever like you can plan to not do things people who live in vehicles definitely we take rest days and there's just there's some times where we need to like recuperate and relax or people get sick you know and so you do spend a whole day maybe two maybe three I don't know it depends on like the person and, and what you need but you can definitely like just chill out in in your house your little that's that's what a van becomes you know it really is your home so just stay home like just stay home and in regards to that also like if you're out on the road or if you just couldn't help it but a vacation or some sort of travel or road trip whatever was like planned during your time of the month like just make a mental note of it and plan to be by whatever you need like do you prefer public restrooms do you prefer like being in a campground like I said if you just if you know when it's going to be happening ahead of time you can take all of this stuff into consideration and do your best to just adapt and create an environment that is going to be the most comfortable for you because you know being on your period it sucks and so creating a time frame and a space in which you can chill out and relax and be comfortable i mean to me it's super super important because otherwise like you're, it's just gonna be so miserable and then also decrease the amount of stress that is going to be taking place during that week because it's already stressful enough so just stock up on supplies and like I said even like if there's certain things that you like to eat maybe make them ahead of time or just have like your groceries and everything that you're gonna need ready to go and now for part two, just to get a little personal with y'all, how I actually handle my period while traveling or just whilst living, whilst, whilst, whilst living in a car, while living in a car, whatever, English. Okay, so I swear it's new. You guys just saw me open it, but here is, this is called the Diva Cup. It's just a, a menstrual cup. It's silicone. Um, this is not sponsored, by the way. This is literally like, I just... I just use this and I really like it. It's made my life a lot easier, so I want to share it. And it goes with the topic of periods. So pros and cons. First, 
the price. I think it cost me, with tax and everything, a little under like $40. And I know at first it's kind of like, whoa, bro, what? You're gonna pay like $40 to use something for your period? And like, yeah, that does sound kind of expensive, but I guess another pro to the Diva Cup would be its durability. The directions that come with it basically say that you should replace it every year, but that everybody's different, you know, depending on what goes on down there, whatever, or what you feel comfortable with, you know? So it's kind of up to your own discretion if you wait longer than a year to replace it like I mean it's not gonna be the end of the world like you'll be fine so on one hand you've got $40 for the entire year as far as the cost of your period and then just say like minimum you spend $5 for a box of tampons which I used to buy them so I know they are not really $5 like you spend more than $5 on a box of tampons once a month so just just say that you only spend $5 for your period a month. 5 times 12, that's 60. So you're already saving $20. And that's like at the bare minimum. That cost difference, I mean, $20 a year, that doesn't seem like a lot, but that adds up, like for real. So those are the first two pros that I would say about the Diva Cup, the price and the durability. And then we go into the fact that it's more eco-friendly because it is reusable. So you're not constantly having to throw something away. Another good thing about the Diva Cup is the health aspect so you don't have to worry about getting TSS so for those of you that don't know that is toxic shock syndrome and that can come as a result of using tampons I'm not gonna get into it but if you use a diva cup like bro you don't even gotta worry about it like cuz honestly if you leave it in like too long you leave it in too long but anyway so the health factor is another one and then by far my absolute favorite thing about the Diva Cup is the fact that I don't have to change it as frequently as anything else. Like it says it will be like leak free protection for up to 12 hours and it really kind of just depends on you as a person, your, you know, how much your body is cycling through and getting rid of, whatever. Originally that was like what sold me on it. I was like I have to try this because I was like what? Only having to deal with your period like twice a day and change something out like that sounds amazing. And you know what? It is. It is amazing. Okay and now for like the negative aspects of it because there are some like sort of. So the first thing would be the fact that it's a little bit messy. What happens is so you've got this cup, all your your blood fills this cup up and then you take it out and you've got this cup full of blood and it's got all sorts of vaginal excretion whatever around it and then you gotta dump it out so you really do have to get like up close and personal with your JJ, you know which I don't think that's like I said in the beginning like I don't think that stuff is gross I don't think it's bad but something to consider like it definitely is a little bit messier because when you take it out or put it in or whatever like yeah you're gonna get stuff on your hands and the second thing would be awkwardness and I say this just because it took me a little bit to get used to it so as I said previously like the way that you use this is it fills up you take it out you dump it out you rinse it off or maybe wash it a little bit whatever and then reuse it. So where do you dump it? You can dump it in the toilet, take care of that, right? But if you're in a public restroom, then what are you gonna do? You have to rinse it to put it back in, so you go rinse it in the sink. I know, I know, so many people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's so gross, I can't believe you do that, like what? Bro, it's just blood. If I had a freaking slash on my hand and I was bleeding profusely, where am I gonna wash it off? In the sink. Whoa! <gasps> yeah, kind of the same concept, but so understandably so, it could be a little bit awkward if you are in a public place and you have to like rinse it off or wash it off, whatever. Next on the list of negative things, there's like an adjustment stage, and I mean that in the sense of like, it is definitely interesting to have to learn how to properly situate that to where it's gonna it's gonna be solid you know because if you insert it and it's a little off or whatever like it could leak that's a very you know that's a thing it could leak you have to do it in a certain way and situate it in a certain place and all that stuff so there's like a learning curve involved you have to adjust to it you have to be able to figure it out Whew, okay honestly I think I think that's about it I'm kind of period talked out 
So I hope that that could, you know, shed some insight on that for if you are a woman and needed some advice or were just curious about it or if you were a guy and just were genuinely interested, like how do they handle that? I mean, obviously everybody is different. They have different preferences or different beliefs or opinions everything um so maybe the diva cup or a menstrual cup in general might not be for you totally understand that i kind of just wanted to you know say my piece and maybe help somebody else that is looking for a something new to try or just like a solution to that problem and i mean if you if there's any specific things that you do or have advice on how to handle your menstrual cycle while traveling or while living in a vehicle please 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 definitely leave it in the comments below um because i'm sure that i didn't get everything because i only know my personal experience and i think that's it. <laughs> I will see you guys next time.